Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about becoming empowered within. I'm delighted to welcome special guest Jennifer Pilates. Jennifer is an entrepreneur, celebrity trainer and advisor, empowerment coach, mentor, and the host of Empowered Within podcast. You can reach Jennifer at her website, jenniferpilates.com, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Jennifer. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Hi, Linda. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, thank you for being here, Jennifer. And I am so excited to learn from you today. And I would like, if it's okay, to start with your transformation journey Mm -hmm. about how a car accident kind of changed your direction. It totally did. It was wild. You know, it was, uh, whoa, definitely one of those you got to go with the flows. And that's all I was able to do. I feel when the universe and God is beckoning at your door, it's usually in this moment of, you know, sickness or this major dramatic event that's transpiring and you have no other choice but to just go with it. You know, those those moments in life. And that's really what was happening to me. I was climbing the corporate ladder fast and furious. I had all of these plans. You know, God was laughing. And um, yeah, one day, terrible car accident, horrific car accident um, that led me into this incredible metaphysical, holistical journey. Um, It transpired in Boulder, Colorado, which at the time, the Mecca of alternative care. So that was such an incredible blessing. So here I was never really being exposed to all these alternative different um, varieties of of care. And I had them at my fingertips. And so through chiropractors and and cranial sacral and working with um, therapists, And, you know, all of these amazing doctors and things that I just, some things I'd never even heard of acupuncture for the first time. I mean, all of this stuff that to some of us now is like, you know, just everyday, everyday events. But back in 1997, that wasn't an everyday occurrence that you're going out and you're looking for these services. And so um, through a lot of pain and a lot of tribulation, I was guided to a woman who specialized in rehabilitative care for Pilates. And so I started with her and I rehabbed for a year. And through that year, I just really enjoyed myself, ended up leaving the corporate world. Um, and at the end, they, you know, every once in a while, there's a small settlement with a car, a car accident. And, and there was something small. It was just enough to go to Pilates school though. And one of the women also that had been training me said, you know, Jennifer, I really think, you know, you'd be really good at this. You've been here like every day in and out, you should go for this. And I thought, okay, it was the exact amount that I needed for the school. Wow. And so I went to the school. I didn't think twice about it. And, you know, my mission was that I just wanted to give back if I could release just one person from being in pain, because all of these amazing trainers had helped me, then that was my mission through going through all this. Now, little did I know it was going to become so much bigger than just that, um, which again, such a blessing, but yeah, that's the, that's the very short end of the story, but it was such an incredible transformation that took me from climbing the corporate ladder, not thinking about self, not tuning into self to a total 360 of finding self, finding, you know, energy and holistic metaphysical worlds and being able to help others and putting, you know, putting others more first, you could say, because I wanted to be there. I wanted to serve. And maybe at that moment, I didn't know that word or that lingo, but that's all I wanted to do is I wanted to serve and I wanted to give back. Wow. Okay. I am not happy that you had an accident, but I am happy of what happened because of that accident. And you mentioned at the beginning as you were starting your story about how, you know, there are times when you have no choice but to go with the flow. And as I'm listening, I'm thinking there are a lot of people who do not choose to go with the flow, who would have an experience like that and think my life is over and the world and the universe has all turned against me and do not see that there is something good that can come out of something bad. So how beautiful that you did that and you did it in such a way that it felt natural, like you were going with the flow and how amazing. And then you talked about self and serving others and how you said when you were climbing the corporate ladder, you weren't thinking of self. And then you thought of self and serving others. So will you clarify for me a little bit what you mean by you weren't thinking of self and then you recognize self and how self helps us to serve others? Absolutely. So during, you know, that time when I was climbing the corporate ladder, it was very much, I knew what I wanted. I knew how to get there. I knew the direction. It wasn't, what am I doing for others? Now, with that being said, I was in the industry of assisted living and retirement community. 
I very much adored the residents and their family and I would do anything for them. So there was some of that, but the ego self, the ego self was, I will make this much money. I will have a house by the time I'm X, Y, and Z. I will be married, have one child, do this, do that. You know, like I was on this path, a path to the point. I remember telling my mother, yeah, I'm not going to have to, I will have a child and then I'm going to have a nanny to take care of the child. Like I'm not going to have time for this. Like this was literally a mindset of someone young in their twenties. I was very young and fortunate to have the career that I did very early on. And I started in the industry when I was 15 years old. So I knew a lot, but at the same time, I knew nothing, right? (laughs) Like I knew nothing. So it was, so that was all ego-based and that, you know, there's nothing, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with ego and we are all programmed at a certain age and you do what you're taught. You do what you know until you figure out and you find yourself. And then you figure out what is good for you and what is your passion and what is your inspiration? And what do you want to give back to this world? And how do you want to serve? And how do you want to, what is your legacy? How do you want to leave this world a better place? And so during all that, like, yes, there was a piece of that because I was specializing in Alzheimer's. I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to help residents. I want, you know, and I was doing all of that. Yes. But on the other side, there was the ego that was like, and you know, the money and the house and the car and the, this and the, that, and, and it all looked great on paper. But I wasn't happy. I was calling, you know, I was, I was crying all the time. I was miserable. I, I took the bigger job and I was losing the in-touch aspect of being so hands-on with the residents and their families. Wow. So because I, I desired to climb the corporate ladder and I had made a bargain, I had made a deal with a company that I was at. And the deal was, um, if you leave our company and you go train with another company, get seasoned which was, was very common, go learn, right? Because I was so young. I, w- I was like maybe 25. Go get more experience. Come back. We'll let you pick any state you want to be in, in New England. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Now, what I hadn't realized at the time was I didn't look at just what am I really good at? So I'm really good at sales and marketing. I'm really good at client relations. And had I just stuck with that path, I mean, God knows where I would be, but that was the better path. Once you jump into more of an administrative, you're the director, you're in charge, et cetera, et cetera. You are with balance sheets and checks and minuses and this and that. And so it just, it wasn't a great marriage, you could say. So there were so many blessings. Like I think the universe just said, we've got to help her. Right. So, and you know, like those pivotal moments happen in your life, you know, out of fear, out of pain, out of a traumatic car accident. And so in that moment, it really just stopped me in my tracks to the point I couldn't physically drive 20 minutes to work because I was in so much pain. Mm. I was in and out of doctor's office, you know, eight hours a day at the beginning. There was so much going on even mentally that I couldn't even express it to the, I had a great girlfriend living with me. I couldn't really express it because how do you put into words something that you don't understand? And that was part of that sort of like, you can call it a first awakening or however, you know, that works for someone, but there was so much going on. I couldn't even formulate it into words. I would just be so quiet, but so, you know, again, so many amazing things happened. And so I found painting, I found my entrepreneur skills. I found Pilates. I found, you know, learning what cranial sticker was and all these holistic aspects of life that I had no idea how they were going to serve me throughout the rest of my life. And so that's where I say it was like, it's, it's sort of, I always had self, but self was being overrun by ego. And that's not to say that ego is always going to be there. Ego is going to be like, Hey girl, did you see over there? If you do X, Y, and Z, you you look at what you can do or look at what you can get or look at how much you can make or, or, you know, your, your name and flashing lights. And, you know, now it's very different to me. Now I let, you know, and over the years, it's been very different to me. Um, really putting what means most and what feels at peace in my heart first versus say, so, you know, your name and lights or the money or this or that it's, well, what have I done today? Who have I served? How have I helped? How have I brought light to the world? Have I made someone smile? You know, it's, it's all of that and really putting yourself first. So I really learned how self-care out of that car accident too. You know, I'd never had massages before. Oh my gosh. And I would, and that was part of my rehabilitation. I had never done Pilates. I was doing Pilates every day. So it was really learning self-care, learning self in that respect. And then knowing that, yes, you do have an ego and the ego can drive you and the ego is not bad, but you, 
I prefer to lead from my heart and I prefer to, when I can balance out those two and it's always, it's still a balancing act these days sometimes, but For sure. you know, it, it just makes such a, a difference when you can just be authentic and know yourself and be okay with yourself. And I wish that our society would change and teach that versus I feel like we all learn this so later on in life, you know, along the ways where it would be so great if we taught that early in life to people. I think our world would be an incredibly different place. Don't you, Linda? But Jennifer, don't you think that that's what we're doing here and now? Okay. is that we're helping people to understand this difference because you talked about ego and you talked about having that outcome based goals where it's money, it's fame, it's my name and lights, it's whatever. And then when we think for most people who are trying to be, you know, humble or trying to be uh, other, other people centric and, and serving, they think that the idea of self care is selfish. Or, or these kinds of things. A, a personal transformation, I don't need to worry about that. I'm taking care of other people. And when you really understand and you really get it right, it's about that, that personal empowerment from within where we recognize who we are. And as you talked about your particular transformation and the things that you did in your corporate world and in your job, I've talked to other uh, leadership experts who said they had a similar issue where once they got to the next promotion, it did not match their skills, their abilities, their talents, their joy. And so he actually stepped down and recognized that that is part of what brought him joy and brought him fulfillment and brought him success. But until we recognize who we are, what we want, what our talents are, what our skills are, we don't even know what we bring to the table. And no. I and I think you, you may have read the book um, Atomic Habits by uh, James Clear. And he talks about that, that uh, kind of a... a a circle of going from outcome based to trying to work that into our identity versus starting with our identity and coming with systems. And then the outcomes, they come naturally. So it's not that we're saying that having wonderful things like a, a great paycheck or, or recognition or appreciation, or any of those things are bad. It's just that when you do it from an auth a place of authenticity, it just comes naturally. Absolutely. It sure does. And once you find your zone of genius, what are you really good at? Like I even a couple of weeks ago, I was working with one of my coaches and mentors and that's something we were working on. And, and so I took some different personality tests that surely I took earlier in life. And it was so eye opening. And I thought all of the things that I would give myself um, flack for because I wasn't really good at it's because they're not in my wheelhouse. So of course I'm not going to be good at them. But I never gave myself necessarily the kudos for everything that I'm great at. Because when I looked at it, I thought, well, of course, this all makes sense now. You know, I'm not necessarily a numbers person. I'm a creative person. I do projects. I invent things. I've always been an entrepreneur and starting a business and helping people brand their business. And I can walk in and change a business and walk out. That's my specialty, not sitting there telling you your numbers, you know, so it was so eye opening, like, and it goes back to those things that people tell you, you know, all a great coach, any good person will say, find what you like and do that. And then find a way to make money at it. And the stuff you don't like, hire it out, delegate it out, figure it out. If there's something that you're not good at, there's plenty of other people that are, and that's okay. Versus thinking you have to be good at everything because we're not good at everything. We're not supposed to be good at everything, you know, and I think that that can make such a, it takes such a load of weight off of, of people, especially when I'm working with my clients and they're like, you mean I don't have to do it? No, you're not supposed to do it all. No. What do you like to do? I want you to, to feel alive in your heart and feel good and, you know, and serve and, and feel amazing about what you're doing. Not go, great. I guess I got to go check the balance sheet. Oh God, Linda, the expenses. I don't even know. Or, oh God, what, how do I figure this out? No, there's so many people that can help you. So many people want to help. And, and that's, that's been a big thing for me too, is allowing others in, um, to help, which is amazing, which, you know, it just, it opened up the avenues for your inspiration and for your light to shine because someone needs to see you, hear you, be with you, not while you're upset because you're grocery shopping. You don't have to grocery shop. You can hire someone to do your grocery shopping. Now, I know that sounds silly in this day and time, but it's true. Like right now I have someone who is doing my grocery shopping so I can be here today because this is what is serving and this is well worth it to me. So it's really just, win. it's the mindset of, find, of, of just working with yourself and being okay with everything. 
Right. And that being okay with everything and opening up rather than doing what kind of comes naturally, unfortunately, and that is comparing and saying, wow, Jennifer's really good at this. I'm not good at that. And then feeling very discouraged um, rather than saying, wow, Jennifer is really good at that. I wonder if she could help me with that. And I'm really good at this and I can do that. So that is wonderful. Recognizing who you are and then being open, being open to see things from a new perspective. That's amazing. So some of the things that you saw from a new perspective is Pilates. And you use this as an incredible tool for healing. Can you help teach me what, what Pilates can do for, for a person like who's been in a car accident? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, again, and and because of the way that I was introduced to Pilates, so I actually, my specialty is rehabilitative care. So I've always worked with people who have had an injury, whether that's my neighbor or whether that's someone on an NFL team or an MLB team. You know, I've always been the fix it girl, you know, go see Jennifer, she's going to fix it. You're in pain, just check her out. And so Pilates is all about working from the inside out. And some people go, well, I don't understand. So when you go to the gym, and you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're seeing the outside of yourself, which is all well and good. But Pilates works on the inside first, on your your little teeny, teeny muscles, so that those outer muscles that you're seeing when you stand in front of that mirror are automatically being worked. So that's, I really like to, to really drive that home for people so they understand it's really a two for the price of one. We're starting at your innermost muscles. The innermost core of your being is where we're starting. And from there, we work outward so that any ailments, because there's going to be more than one, we are going to fix along the way, find along the way, dig up and release. Now, not only is that on an, on a uh, muscular level, that's also on an emotional level because we were, you know, we're working with in a cellular level at this point. It truly is body, mind, and spirit. So we're connecting your mind to your muscles. We're adding in your breath work, your spirit, which is connecting you to self. And it really is such a transformational practice when someone is really open to it. And so you're looking at strengthening your body, lengthening your body, all in a very safe environment because you're working with yourself and your own body weight, whether that's on a mat, which you can do anywhere, or whether you are you have the equipment at home or you're going to a studio, then those are added benefits as well. But you truly can get all of the benefits right from a mat. I've started since I've been spending a lot more time in Florida, I have transitioned into pool lattes. So I take the whole workout and put it in the pool. I have never been happier, Linda. I am obsessed, absolutely obsessed. And so I did a little bit of a trial for myself because I know that on land with Pilates, Joseph has this guarantee. Joseph Pilates is the originator of the method. And it, his guarantee is in 10 sessions, you will feel a difference. In 20 sessions, you're going to be able to see a difference. And in 30 sessions, you will have a new body. And I always tell people that's different for everyone. So if you're needing to lose weight, that happens. If you need to lose interest, that happens. We're decreasing pain. We're decreasing um, ailments and dis-ease in the body. Anxiety is decreasing. You're sleeping better. Your mental attitude is better. Your mindset, your confidence is better because you're feeling better. Your posture is better. So I took this challenge. I challenged myself, Linda. So I may have went on a little hiatus from working out, which was very difficult for me. So when I say that, it means I was only walking. So I was just walking every day. And I was just eating and just having a heyday because in some parts of life right now, some of us are doing that, right? Like it's, there's a lot going on. So you can find a moment to, to indulge here and there. So I was indulging a little bit more than I normally would. And I said, okay, I'm going to challenge myself in the Pilates world now. Can I get the same exact results there that I can get on land? Linda. So today is what, June 23rd? I started this on June 1st. I've gotten in, today was session 17, from just the beginning of the month. So it's a seven, within 17 days now, or no, within 23 days, but not in 17 sessions. So not every day. I am down an inch to two inches between my bust, my waist, and my hips. That's and that's fantastic. just, that's just to show you, because some people are like Pilates, how do you do that? So, and because I do a lot of virtual training, because I have clients all over the world, we've even transitioned to doing virtual Pilates, Linda, because the routine that we do in the pool is very similar to what's on land. So my client can be in the pool virtually and I can be on land and still teaching them. 
How cool is that? Yeah. So we have extended what we've known to be Pilates all these years because it's always been mat work or with the equipment, which is phenomenal. And I, I love it all. I love all aspects, but you know, the, you, you've got to switch it up, you know? So this is something I'm doing for 20 some years. And I thought, I'm just going to really, I want to challenge this now. And I will say it was not fun because honestly, Linda, there were shorts I wasn't fitting in. I've never done this before. I've mm. never just like slacked, really slack. And it was very uncomfortable for me, but I, I did it because I wanted to be able to say, wow. And I wowed myself. I was going to wait till the end of the month to, to measure, but I thought I'm going to do it now. And some, and the reason also behind this is because with Pilates, when you are working out and ideally the perfect workout is two to three times a week. That's it. Joseph believes you could do 20 minutes a day and be fine. So again, it's phenomenal. It's easy. You can, this is something that's doable in all schedules. Well, when you are working with Pilates, you tend to at first go, I don't think anything's happening. Now, this is me. Now, let's be clear. I'm, a, I'm an instructor of over 20 some years. You don't see your own self. You don't, right? Like you're just giving your, you're like, oh, I still can't get into my favorite shorts. Nothing is working. I can't believe this. I'm in 16 sessions. What the heck is going on, Linda? So that's when my old self goes, you dingling. Pilates, you lose inches first. And I know this, like, I know this, but I was just in my ego mind. You lose the inches first. They start, it starts around your bust and it slowly goes all the way down. And then you lose, you usually lose last around your hips. So this was the amazing that I lost everywhere, everywhere. So when I did that, I went, oh my gosh. And then I went and then I put on other pairs of shorts and I was like, oh, yay. So, you know, that was lovely, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's such an amazing method and the posture and feeling good in the pelvic floor, which is so important for women, particularly as we age, because I know some people will be like, well, even in the pool, you're not, you have the weight resistance. Again, you've got the resistance, just like being on the machine, but you've got the resistance of the water in yourself, still strengthening your pelvic floor, which is so important as we, you know, get older, you're still getting that muscle, that weight resistance, which we need for bone growth. And I'll tell you, over the years, I was always five, one and a half forever, Linda. I actually gained a whole inch in height. So I have stayed five, two forever. Really? Because of Pilates. Because mm -hmm. you're, again, you're strengthening and you're lengthening out your spine from the inside out. So you really, that's where your posture, after one session, your posture is completely different than how you walked in. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. so many incredible things. And I'm just delighted at how much benefit you can get from going from one source. And I love that you talked about how our body and our mind and our spirit, all of these things are interconnected. And that when you start to do these things, it is also helping with your mind. And if you're mm -hmm. talking about like an accident and trauma, it's not just physical, it is also emotional and getting that anxiety and, and not feeling safe and all of these kinds of things. And it's so cool that there's more than one way to fix things. And I love that doing something physically can help us mentally and emotionally as well, which is it's magic. It's totally magic. And I love it because I'm not, and you know, and I'll be honest, I'm like anyone else. I'm not a workout fanatic. I'm not. I like to walk. I like to do Pilates. You know, me, yes, I used to always be on a treadmill here and there, but now that I live, you know, between Florida and Arizona, I'm always outside. That's the last thing I want to do is be in the gym. So it, it's to be able to do it in the pool, do it on the mat, have 10 minutes here or 20 minutes there. That's what I love to encourage with my clients that you know, you don't have to just spend an hour. If you have the hour, that's phenomenal. But a little bit can go a long ways too. And I think that's something that's so important with the way that our lives are changing. And, you know, sometimes just, we just don't know what's happening from one moment to the next, Linda. So it's good I to know, know that you've got 10 minutes, you need it, just close the door, go for it. Put the mat outside on the lawn, go for it. And you can do it. Okay. Now that makes all the difference because people are busy. And you even talked earlier about, you know, I don't even have time to go to the grocery store. I've got other things that I need to do. Our time is precious. And then to be able to say, okay, uh, now what you need to do or what would really benefit you is to spend some time exercising and, and doing this specific thing of Pilates. Mm -hmm. And some people think, are you crazy? I, I, I don't have time. 
I don't have time. And we talked about how some things we can hire out. We can't hire this one out. I cannot hire someone else to exercise for me. I cannot hire someone else to eat well for me. It's like, hey, you know, I think I'm supposed to drink more water. uh, Jennifer, could you drink some more water for me? There are some things that we cannot hire out. We cannot delegate out. And this is one, and that is our physical health and well-being. So it is just reassuring and comforting when you say, if I have 10 minutes, there's something that I can do because 10 minutes feels doable. And you know what? If I love it, I might just make some more time for it. But I got to start, right? Right. If you love it, you might go, that 10 minutes wasn't bad. Oh, I can't wait to do 10 minutes every day. Or, oh yeah, that's going to be great. You know, and I find that even myself, like I love a good 10, 15, 20 minute workout. Tops 30. You know, because I, but that's, that's the way that, you know, things have transitioned and life is. And, you know, that's what he believed. 20 minutes a day. And he believed everything in moderation. He drank his whiskey. He smoked his cigars. He did his workouts. He ate, you know, he drank, he lived a great life. And he always said he was 50 years before his time. And he was absolutely correct on that aspect. You know, he had it down to a science on balancing life and balancing fun and balancing, you know, his relationship with his lovely wife, who was also um, an instructor with him. So, you know, it's just finding that little bit of balance, but remembering that putting self first is really self-serving. It's not selfish Mm -hmm. and it's so important to do. It is. And that reminds me of that little safety preview that they always give on the airplanes about how, if you happen to need an oxygen mask, put one on yourself first so you can help others. And the reason is we are better able to serve other people if we're in a good place. And that makes all the difference. Like you said, this is not selfish. This is, um, this is a benefit. Absolutely. It truly is. And it, you know, for people that sometimes they still don't get it, I always say, well, let's take this analogy. You're angry and you're frustrated and you're having a fit. Okay. Are you now going to go to, go to church? Are you going to go to your woman's group? Are you going to go and get on the phone and call your loved? No, you don't want to be around people when you have that attitude. You want to shift it. So maybe you're going to go for a quick walk. Maybe you're going to take a moment and have a glass of water. Maybe you're going to lay down and have a meditation and, you know, straighten out and balance your chakras. But you're not just going to take your angst and put it on someone else. Or we'll say you shouldn't be. Yeah, so I was going to say been, you can. Lots of people you, do that. You know, lots of people do do it. So learn the lesson that that's not like there's there's a venting, but then there's a taking advantage of. And I always say, so I love this, Linda. So I have like this 90 second rule. I can have a fit, whatever it is, for 90 seconds. Love it. After that 90 seconds, pull it together, Jennifer. Let's move on. And at that moment, let's go, okay, not why is this happening to me? It's about how is this happening for me? What is my lesson? So as an example, earlier today, I got really fit to be tied. I was upset. I couldn't get into my pool at 830 in the morning. There was a lock on the gate. and, and, And so it really started off my day cranky. And then I was upset about something else. And, and so it it sort of snowballed. And I finally just went, what are you really mad about? Cause really like, can we just look around your life is not that bad. And I thought, I'm really mad that someone else was controlling an aspect of my life. And I don't like to be controlled. Mm. I.e. I wanted to go swimming and this person is controlling. Okay. So how, how, what are you going to do about that? And so there were things that I could do about that. And it's taking that moment to really take that introspect. And then you go, and sometimes it's hard, right? Because you don't always want to go, oh yeah, well, I guess I'm being being a dodo head or I'm, I really should, you know, like I, I had to be like, okay, okay. Like you don't like to be controlled. No, who does? And you're upset that someone's controlling you and now you don't want to be here. And so, okay, so move on, move on. It, it, it's, it's, it's taken a while to get here. Um, <laughs> but I'm so proud that you are and that you were able to get to that place quickly because a lot of people do not know why they're angry. They feel angry all the time. And you say, why? And, and if I were going to come up with a why, I would say, duh, it's because somebody had the pool locked and you would stop right there instead of recognizing that is just a surface thing. There's something going on deeper. And when I find out what the heart of it is, 
then I'm going to be better able to um, solve what it is that's going on in my mind. Right. And I knew because there was a difference because it kept festering, right? Like this, this frustration kept following me around and I'm like, this isn't me. And then I was like, okay, what are you? And then I was like, okay. I'm like, I hear it. Like I have a control issue. I also am being guided that my time is up where I'm living. And I, so I just said out loud today, I said, okay, you know what, God and angels, I'm good. I'll start packing boxes today. As a matter of fact, if you show me where I want a definite sign today, where am I going? Wow. Because technically I'm not supposed to be transitioning for, for some time, but I thought, no, like you don't have to keep giving me these, you know, um, aggravation. Like I'm good. I'm happy to, you know, I, I'm a mover. I move a lot. So I'm like, okay, I'm good. Where are we going? Show me. And so it, it, it's just, it's taking that time and going a step deeper. Now there are other times where, you know, say someone pulls out in front of you and anytime someone does that now, I'll be like, oh, such a dodo head. And then I'll be like, oh my God, blessings to you. I hope you get where you, you need to be. I hope everything's okay. You know, so you just switch it, right? You know, I'm all like, you know, just, okay. You obviously needed to go first, not me. That's fine. Thank you for saving me from whatever is happening. You know? It's like, it's just really calming down and remembering how good it feels to be at peace on the inside, especially when the world is chaotic outside and knowing, and I think this is so important, Linda, that you have the right and you deserve to be happy regardless of what is going on around you. Ooh, you have the right and you have the ability to be happy and to feel at peace even when some jerk pulls in front of you in traffic, even when things don't go the way that you want. We have the power from the inside and that is that's really what makes all the difference. So thank you so much for bringing that to people's attention. Is there anything that you want to make sure that we cover before we close today? I feel like this has been so amazing, Linda, and I want to thank you again for everything that you're doing and all the light and inspiration you're bringing to this world is amazing. I appreciate that. And I loved when you talked about how I bring the light everywhere I go, and I appreciate you bringing some light here today. Thank you so much, Linda. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by J.K. Rowling. She said, We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all of the power we need inside ourselves already. Today, I invite you to recognize and accept the power you have within. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.